right, let's play first. And this is the first shot, as you mentioned. A little bit of the second one, huh, for continuity there. All right. Huh, interesting. You are mentioning FK. You have four FK controls for the neck and it really drives you crazy. Yeah. It's a good question what I would do. It's, uh, it kind of depends. I'm used to a specific setup at work. So for instance, this looks very IK. Just because you have a move out this way while you have a very separate rotation in that wrist. And it kind of moves independently from the chest as well especially through here there's a lot of movement you can see a little bit of a breakage here in the enveloping where if if you would do a swipe like this there would have to be some shoulder <laughs> excuse me scapula thing here with a little bit of an adjustment in the chest as well just as a as a picky note here but to answer your question we usually have um it's kind of the ikfk combination here where you have IK to move in the head in all directions but you can still rotate around an FK type of thing but if you move the chest it would still move in FK so it would take the whole head with it at the same time we have an inner chest that just kind of moves only the chest area and then we have usually separate controls IK where I move in any directions to kind of just you know a nice C curve so if you wanted something that's completely around here for instance not that you want that here but I'm just saying that's kind of the setup that we have. So if you're asking what you would do is I personally would do IK only because I'm used to it. At the same time, I would put these guys into FK because that is that just looks too much like IK. And, and arms in IK are hard to fake to make it look like um, FK. IK arms have notoriously, you know, like straight lines in terms of like no arcs. Uh, rotations on the wrists are separate. They don't really quite connect with uh, elbow movement so sometimes a lot of elbow movement happens and then the wrists don't really rotate and they're not being affected by that so i personally so there's not much going on just yet your little gesture there and I, overall it's also very slow um and i will probably treat this almost where elbows are always kind of together and they might go out but then it might not go out here like that like a human I think, I don't know if it was in your critique or someone else's critique where I said that I wouldn't treat a dinosaur like a human, more like a cat, even though it's totally not a cat. But it's more like, it's just a human thing to get elbows out. Whereas in other animals, they don't really do that. It's, it kind of stays put, uh, you know, that axis forward with some, some changes. But this just feels, it could work if you just bring in that and you have... A little bit of elbow movement out, but I think bringing that arm out so far is weird. I think elbows out, you can get away with a little bit. It's also a bit weird why there's that move here. I would just, I would keep this pretty much around here. It just a little accent moves, and whenever the the dinosaur moves, you have a bit of a drag, and then come up and some adjustments in the claws. And this is mostly all about eating. Because imagine you're going to have a piece here coming up, arm, 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 hanging around here. Unless, you know, you're getting into something where it, it hangs here and it wants to kind of grip it. Um, but I think that's going to make it way too complicated. So for me personally, I would keep these guys just pretty close to the body and just kind of react a bit. That's kind of like a drag overlap type of thing. And every now and then, maybe on here in that big, it's kind of, Get closer to the body and tense up the fingers. Always with some offsets, obviously timing and posing. But I wouldn't go as wide in terms of all that movement that you have in here. And then on that step back, it's kind of hard to see. I think you got something in there. I'm looking at just right around here on that step back that you have enough rotation up in the hips. I think the way it goes back and then recovers up until around here-ish, 33, it's pretty good. It has faster and then kind of slows down and eases in and reverses direction. Not too slow, not too fast. But then from here to here, 
if I just look at this section here, it's very straight. There's no rotation in the back side. The timing seems very even. So on a step like that, it's going to translate over that side of the hip. You can go up a bit this way, uh, depending on how broad you want to go. Technically, if this leg goes up, the hips would shoot up on this side here. But I would definitely have a, at the very beginning I can experiment with bringing that hip up a bit, rotate that in Y, and then once it's fully in the air, have a bit more movement up here in the hip, just for the weight transfer. And then as you take that step here, it's going to translate over to its right side. And again, with the hip going up this way, because all the weight will be transferred onto that leg. Same thing here, as you do this, you want some rotation in Y, some changes in rotation there, and a little bit of side to side. Not too much because it's a fairly straight on and getting into that meat business. It's not too crazy. And there are some pops like you mentioned, you're gonna be trying to fix there. Like stuff like this, if you would track this, it goes up and hits this wall and goes straight down. So you're in that one frame direction change land with very straight pass. And it's a bit more of an arc, even though here it's kind of good, though. It starts with a nice arc and hits there. But yeah, I mean, it depends. If you're not comfortable with uh, FK and you want to switch to IK, totally fine with me. It's, it, that's, that's totally up to you. It's your workflow. Uh, and it's very subjective, in my opinion, because I do work in IK a lot because of work. And then as you get there, probably instead of slow jaw moves, and slow head moves like that, I would stay within, let's see here, kind of around this area here, something like that. Just, you want to feel some chewing and not that slow of a move. But nothing too crazy, just a bit more than here, then it's kind of a, it's a bit simple. And it's also a bit isolated, you can get a bit more Whoa, you have some rotation in the head, so you want to feel more fading out into this with a little bit in the chest as well. Uh, but that's it for that. Um, now you are asking, how would I do it? I'm not sure what you mean, If how you would conserve your FK animation to get into IK. I mean, the thing you can do, if you have a controller here, or you can set a controller, like where, wherever your um, IK controller is, right? If that's going to be at the same position with your FK, I don't know how that rig is set up, but I would assume so. You can always put a sphere here, constrain, point and orient that sphere here, bake it all out, so then that sphere has all the tracking of the head, switch to IK, which you know will pop somewhere, and then you constrain the IK back to that sphere, and it will have the exact look and everything of your FK move, your previously FK move. And then you can start cleaning up some uh, some arcs and pops. That, if that's what you mean. Um, and then you're going to say you're going to add the meat later. I think that's it in your email. You're saying you're having a hard time with clean pops and your animation. Just don't forget that you, before you do anything in the head, because it sounds like you're starting... Uh, your problems with the head, with the arcs and stuff. Make sure that what I talked about here with the roots, um, I mean, at least for me, whenever I do cleanup, I go root, chest, head, and then depending on the action, leg and arms, human or creature. So in this case, whatever you're going to do now with weight shifts and rotations or whatever it is, I don't know how that rig is constructed, but it's probably going to affect the chest because of that, the head. So all of your arcs of your heads, your head moves are going to be all messed up. So I would get this really, really solid, all the weight transfer and the shifts and everything. And then the chest, how it reacts to this, and then ultimately the head. And then what you can do if you, it's pretend you like the head animation and it is IK, you can constrain that. You can bake out that IK again on the locator or a piece of geometry so that it has all the head animation and then constrain the head to that object. And then whatever you do in here is not gonna affect the head because it's constrained, like it's constrained to that. If that rig supports it like that. Sometimes if you do still move anything here, the head might move around and twist around because of a pull on the IK. 
It's not quite sure. This depends how that rig is uh, constructed. Anyway, I hope that makes sense. And then the other guy here, whoop, it's a bit even there. I'm tracking the mouth here. You can see it. Uh, that mouth line is very straight. There's not much going on here, especially with an arm going forward. And then here's a lot of scapula, shoulder stuff going on, but not really anything in the head and, and neck. So it looks like it's an IK head or like a head align or whatever that controller is called, depending on the rig. That feels better. I like this here. But on something like this, there would still be some rotation, sideways tilt and some up and down impact on the head. And then here it feels a bit loose again. Like there's such a move up here on that hand. That feels like it would have a bigger impact. I would again lean over a bit this way. And then lean back. Even if it's minimal. That feels good. This feels a bit weirdly separate. Also your arcs, you know, like your IK feels like it's doing this. And then down. So watch arcs. And then here I would get a bit more rotation in the chest. But then definitely in the head. You have stuff here. This, I don't know if that's the chest or just the shoulders. But whatever it is, you got to have the same thing uh, affecting the head. So if this pulls up here, the shoulder or chest area, it, the head orientation is still going to change down this way. Just enough to feel like there's an influence. And then if you go here, a little detail, put your hand over there. That feels a bit broken there. It might just be the angle of this outside piece, but just watch out that it's not this from a profile view. But as you go over there and especially lift this arm up, all that tension is here so that you would also uh, have the fingers dig into that side there just for tension and gripping. Which then would be reflected here. Stronger, stronger grips. All right. I would say that is it. Uh, and yeah, thank you. All right. There's an email. You can sign up. You can start whenever you want. You can submit whenever you want. You get 16 submissions. Either way, a like and subscribe would be awesome. All right. Thank you.